Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Belgrade Online, an online ministry of Belgrade Avenue United Methodist Church. Welcome to Belgrade Online. I'm Dan, the video editor of Belgrade Online. Here are this week's announcements, followed by Dan's sermon and some music to brighten your day. Thanks again for watching Belgrade Online month and it's been a few years since we've done a church directory for Belgrade. So we're going to do a new 2023 church directory this year. What's going to happen is that somebody from the company that bought out Life Touch is going to be coming out and taking pictures in September. They'll come out and they'll take pictures and everyone's going to get a free directory. And then if you want to purchase the pictures that they take from there, that you can definitely do that as well through through them. Oh, and a free 8x10. My hope is to have that out to you so everybody has the directory kind of somewhere between Thanksgiving and before Christmas. So kind of a, you know, early, early Belgrade Christmas gift, I guess. And my goal this year also, my second goal is that, you know, in the past, the directories have had some blank pictures where there's no picture there. There's family information, but no picture. I, I would love to have a picture in every single slot for every single family. But if you can't make the time slots, we can also, I can also come out and take your photo as well. And so, or you can come in at a different time and we can do that and submit photos also. But that hey, it's going on everyone. Pastor Dan here. Hope everyone's having a great weekend so far. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been around here. So it's great to be back with y'all. And this morning, we're taking a little break from any sermon series, and I want to talk about something that's on my heart a little bit, you know, and uh, it's something that I think that all of us need to hear, especially in the in the, the world we live in right now and the particular time in history in which we live in it. And uh, that thing is is this idea of rest. So we're going to talk about rest, and we're going to talk about a few different things that pertain to rest this week. And I hope you find it super helpful. And I'm also going to be sharing a few pictures from uh, my trip in California this past week, and uh, that kind of play into the message. And so hope you enjoy those as well. Uh, but that's all I've got for you today. Um, hope you enjoy this message and have a fantastic week, and we'll see you soon. Grace and peace, y'all. Right, all right. Well, this morning, um, this morning we're going to kind of... Uh, I'm going to kind of break from how I usually do things on Sunday mornings. I'm usually, uh, you know, the scriptures talks about there's, there's different uh, gifts that different people have. And, and uh, there's apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a teacher, you know. That's kind of what I do. And, um, uh, but this morning we're, we're not going to, I'm not going to do kind of teaching style. I'm going to do this kind of more of a devotional style because, that's what's on my heart lately, and I hope it's uh, I hope it's kind of what's uh, what what might connect with you. And so it's going to be more of a devotional kind of a style than a teaching this morning per se. So we're going to go informal. And um, like I said, I've been gone this past week uh, uh, with at a family wedding in California, and and um, I'll have some pictures I'll show uh, at the end of the message. But there is one I want to show right now, and it's the first one you got back there. And I've shown this just to prove to you all that I can dress up. So <laughs> I have one suit and I have one tuxedo. <laughs> I, had a, I bought the tuxedo in high school because it was cheaper to buy for prom than rent it. So I bought it and I still have it. And no, it does not fit me and I don't want to talk about it. And so, um, but this suit does fit me. I got this last year for family wedding and this is the second time I have now worn it. <laughs> I wear it once a year. So anyways, the family wedding was in, uh, in Santa Rosa in Sonoma County, which if you're familiar with that, that's in wine country. Um, my niece got married and um, I officiated her wedding and, and she, the, the guy that she married, fantastic guy, and he's, he's uh, studying to run, run vineyards. He wants to own his own vineyard someday. So they got married in a vineyard, St. Francis Vineyard in Santa Rosa, and it was absolutely 
Probably one of the most gorgeous weddings I've ever been to in my life. It was, it was beautiful. So that's where we were um, uh, for the wedding, but I'll show you more in a bit. But um, this is a trip, this trip that we went on, uh, this has kind of been in the works for, for uh, about a year, and this is a trip that we had to fight to get to. Um, just about everything that could stop it from happening happened, you know? Um, you know, I, I want to get real with everyone because we can't get real here. Where can we get real? You know, summer is my favorite season, hands down, flying cards, flying colors, cards, <laughs> flying colors. Um, I'm still on vacation if you haven't told. Uh, but see, summer's my favorite season, but as a pastor, it's, it's tough. It's a tough season because when the summer comes along, um, there's a lack of communal rhythms that happen. You know, that's uh, as a pastor in the summertime, everyone kind of kind of heads outside for the summer, and that's okay. Um, also, school isn't going on, so there's that lack of communal rhythm. Like the whole, you know, the uh, everyone in the world isn't having regular school. Uh, regular is they're on they're not on that regular rhythm, you know, and so the kids are around more, and it it's, it seems more chaotic and. Um, and the lack of, of rhythm like that is great for a couple weeks. But then, you know, once the end of June, early July hits, I'm craving that structure again. And some, some people here might exist outside of those rhythms, and that's fine. But see, in our culture, we live in a time of heightened expectations. And so when, when summer comes around, I always feel like, okay, I've got to... I've got to get to stuff that I couldn't get to in the year, and I end up front-loading uh, front my summer with so many activities. I get so ambitious, and all right, I've got, this, I've got a lot of time to do stuff, so I'm going to get to stuff that I couldn't get to during the school year, and I overload my plate, and pretty soon, uh, instead of doing a couple things really well, I try to do three or four or five things, and it ends up going poorly. <laughs> and this is, usually happens every year. Um, so when it comes to expectations, it's, it's the expectations sometimes that the culture can put on ourselves can cause way more stress. And sometimes this, this, the, the pressure and the expectations we put on ourselves causes more stress on top of that. And I find that, um, especially now at this time when we're getting ready to pivot from summer to fall, um, that I've, I've experienced something in the last week that I feel like God spoke to me in a, experientially. He didn't like, you know, speak to me, whisper in my ear or anything, but it was an experiential speaking, you know. And I want to talk about that today. And I want to talk about something that I think that we all, we all need to hear and we would all be benefit from, we would all benefit from hearing. And so um, before we get to it, I'm going to pray real quick and then, and then um, I'll share a scripture and we'll, we'll get into it. So let's bow our heads. I invite all of us to take a deep breath before we pray. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the life that you've given us. We thank you for the peace that's always available to us and the world that you've placed us in. God, I ask this morning that you would open our eyes, give us eyes to see and ears to hear, and hearts that understand not only what you're saying to us, but what's going on all around us. Pray that your spirit would fill us and lead us and guide us, mold us and shape us to be who you've created and are developing us to be. In your name, amen. And amen. So, um, our scripture this morning is from 1 Kings chapter 5, and it's verses 1 through 5. And I'll read that real quick here. And it says this, When Hiram, king of Tyre, heard that Solomon had been anointed king to succeed his father David, he sent his envoys to Solomon, because he'd always been on friendly terms with David. Solomon sent back this message to Hiram. You know that because of the wars waged against my father David from all sides, he could not build a temple for the name of the Lord, his God, until the Lord put his enemies under his feet. But now the Lord, my God, has given me rest on every side, and there's no adversary or disaster. I intend, therefore, to build a temple 
for the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord told my father David when he said, Your son, whom I'll put on the throne in your place, will build the temple for my name. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we all said, thanks be to God. Now, the scripture is, you know, it's, it's taking place, of course, after King David passes away and his son Solomon is coming to the, has taken the throne. David wanted to build the temple, but there was too much war going on with the surrounding areas, with the enemies. And so Solomon comes and takes, takes the throne after David passes away and the, the enemies have been defeated and now there's this time of peace and they're able to build this temple. And so, um, so Solomon, both David and Solomon are desiring to build a house for God. And they couldn't because of the warfare of all their enemies. But then it says that God gave them rest on all sides. So there's no more adversary, no more misfortune, no more disaster. None of that was present anymore. And their enemies were put, as the scriptures say, under the soles of their feet. Now, when I was reading, I, I came across this scripture this, this, uh, this last few days when I got back in my office, and, and um, uh, I read it, and I read it in a little bit of a different way. Um, when I read it, like I said, I'm going to approach this more devotionally. I, I, I read this scripture, and it spoke to my heart because they're wanting to build, as the scripture says, a house for God. And what is a house for God? A house for God is, is it's a temple. It's a sanctuary. In this day, they believed it was the dwelling place of the divine. And in our time, we know that the, the dwelling place of God isn't in buildings. It's in our hearts. It's in us. It's in our lives, in our words, in our actions, in our relationships, in our comings and goings, in our... The dwelling place of God is inside of us. The house of God, the sanctuary, is, is you and me. It's all of us together. And so building that sanctuary, building a house for God to them is different than what it means to us. To, to them it meant getting brick and mortar and building a structure in a temple, kind of like what we think a church might be. But according to Jesus and according to us, building a, building a sanctuary and a house for God is inner work that happens inside of us. And so, just like them, they had enemies, but our enemies, the scriptures say, aren't flesh and blood. Our enemies usually happen, uh, usually come, from, come in the form of ideas or principles or obligations or perceived obligations or pressures or responsibilities in our daily and weekly lives or our routines or what, what the, the expectations others put on us, or rather what we think the expectations that others put on us are. And those tend to be the enemies that come against us in this holy place, in our, in our hearts, our sanctuaries, if you will, you know. And, and so we get, just like them, we get into warfare. And that's like the struggle that's caused by the stresses of these expectations, these obligations, and these external things. And so this warfare is this, this struggle, this inner work to maintain this sanctuary, this dwelling place for God inside of us. And what God tell, what Solomon says that God did here is he says, once those enemies are defeated, it said God gave them rest on all sides. And so the goal for us in, in building this sanctuary in our hearts is to find rest. Because the rest, maintaining a, 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 a heart of rest, a heart of peace, that's when God thrives in us. That's when God thrives in us and through us. That's when we, we can grow, is when we experience rest. And so this week I want to talk a little bit about rest and I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, and um, actually, it's probably going to spill over into next week as well. Um, so rest is something that is a lost art in our culture. You know, we, we live in a part of the world that has a history of pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. And if you don't work hard, you don't deserve 
I don't know, X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. Everyone's got a different idea of what you don't deserve if you don't work as hard as they think you should in their minds. But really what it means is they don't, you're not doing the type of work they think you should do. Not because it's good or not, it's because they had to do it, so they want you to do it too. You know? But rest isn't necessarily uh, something that's big in our culture. We live in a very unhealthy culture, and it's been unhealthy for a century or so. <laughs> and so but it's gotten progressively more unhealthy simply because we think of ourselves as working machines instead of human beings. But see, God knows that that's a tendency of all humanity. And thousands of years ago, he gave us this, this principle to follow. And it's a, the principle of a rhythm of rest that we need to learn how to live into. And if you're anything like me, that's very difficult. Learning to rest and learning to not go, go, go so hard, hit it hard, bang, bang, boom, boom, keep going, be responsible all the time, that's hard. Especially when you know people are watching, especially when you know people are depending on you, especially when you can just keep on piling up the pressure points. Rest is so important to our uh, our health is humans, but we neglect it. And we make excuses so we don't have to do it. But if we want to maintain healthy inner peace, uh, healthy inner peace in our lives, we have to learn how to rest. So I want to talk about rest. And rest is not just a break. We think of rest, we think of just laying down and sleeping. You know, it can mean that, but it's not just that. To rest, it means to have a refreshed mind and to have a renewed perspective. And it, it doesn't mean doing nothing, but it could. So the, um, according to Oxford Dictionary, the definition of rest means to cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. Relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. Everybody say relax. Everybody say refresh and recover. Relax, refresh, and recover. And I, I uh, saw a psychologist who said this, rest is defined as refreshing yourself, whether it be from sleeping or relaxing, inactivity after exerting yourself, or rejuvenating yourself by lying down. But, and here's the part that I want to major on. More importantly, it's, rest is also defined as alleviating weariness. Alleviating weariness. And I like to think of it in a couple different ways. So that's, that's the tiny little teaching part. But here's, here's what, what comes to my mind when I think about that. Um, I think of rest in a couple different ways. The first ways that I, that I think about rest is I think about it in terms of, of, of exercise. You're like, isn't that the opposite of rest? <laughs> well, here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. Um, when I'm exercising or doing some kind of resistance training, you know, lifting, lifting some kind of weight or whatever, you generally don't want to train the same muscle group multiple days in a row because the muscle group needs time to rest. And that doesn't mean that you don't use those muscles in your day-to-day -day life. It just means that you don't overexert that muscle group God bless you. for a time. You know, so if I'm lifting, if I'm doing a lot of rows or something, which is a back exercise, if I'm training my back muscles, that means I don't, if, if I stop training my back muscles for a few days, it doesn't mean I'm not using my back muscles every day, because I am. You have to use them to walk, to be upright, and to do pretty much anything. So it doesn't mean you're not using them. It just means you're not overexerting them. You're not putting excess stress on them. You're not isolating those muscles and hammering them, you know. You got to rest a muscle group because it needs time to recharge. Because did you know that you can lift weights every day for the rest of your life, but if you don't rest the muscle group, it will not grow. Because your muscle grows during rest. Rest is when your muscle grows. And in the same way in our spiritual lives, if we don't rest, we don't grow. 
the going, 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 going mentality sounds good theoretically to people who have high ambition and are, you know, hard, hard work, who idolize hard work. But in reality, it will kill you if you don't stop eventually. Instead of growing, you will literally atrophy. No rest, no muscle growth. No muscle growth. So I think about that in terms of exercise. But I also think about rest in terms of music. For those of you that are musicians, you know that a rest on a piece of sheet music is a period of silence after other notes and before other notes. There's always rests in music. Sometimes you need the music to stop while other parts of the music go on. And there's these rhythms, literally. <laughs> Sometimes you, you need the music to go silent or to stop just for a bit and then start up again. If music didn't have any rests, it wouldn't take more than a minute or two for it to not sound like music. It would just be a bunch of clanging and a bunch of clutter if there were no rests and you'd be way overstimulated and you couldn't listen to it. Because the rests in a piece of music, the rests energize the other notes. It's what gives the other notes power, is learning where the rests go and how to do the rests right. Rest energizes the other notes. Sometimes, just like music, you got to stop. As a matter of fact, in Hebrew, the definition of Sabbath is literally stop. Like a, like a rest in a piece of music. Sometimes you just got to stop. Just stop. And it doesn't mean you stop everything. It means stop doing what you were doing. Rest that muscle group. Change it up a little bit. Life is the same way. Sometimes, sometimes you need to change. You need to stop. You need to, you need to break. Because if you don't, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get too overstimulating. It's going to be too stressful. It's just going to be clutter, like music without rests. So I think about it in terms of exercise. I think about rest in terms of music. Now, the, the last thing here, you're like, you're almost done? I'm like, yeah, I'm almost done. I told you, I was going to do a devotional style. Um, the last thing I want to share with you about resting is it's not just, it's not just, uh, you can think about it in terms of exercise. You can think about it in terms of music, but I like to think about it in terms of, I like to think about rest in terms of experiencing wonder. And for me, this is the most helpful. This is the most helpful way to think about rest for me, to experience wonder. Now, if you know me, you know that I've got a passion for a few things. I love music. I love making stuff. Whether it be making music, making short films or, you know, whatever. I love films. I love movies. I also love travel. And if you know me, you know I really love the ocean. <laughs> I love water. And um, this past week, I've had, uh, I've had the, the uh, opportunity to go to the water. You know, we, we spent some time in a vineyard, but um, after the wedding was over, we stayed for another few more days, and we, um, we were about an hour and a half north of San Francisco. And so, um, um, electrifying. Um, we were about an hour and a half north of San Francisco, and so on our, after kind of the wedding activities were done and the bride and groom went off to their honeymoon, um, the rest of the family, we just kind of hung out and, and did a few things. And so um, uh, I've, got some, I, I've got some pictures that I'm going to show you. Um, and I'm not just telling you about the vacation. This all works in. But um, after a very stressful few seasons, personally, which I won't get into, but after a very stressful few seasons, this was a beautiful, beautiful time just to go to the ocean. I've actually read uh, a few studies recently and a couple articles that said that the ocean is good for your mental health. So I was like, let's, let's go. Let's do this, you know. So on um, one of the days last week, we went to, uh, we, we took a trip down to this place called Bodega Bay um, in California. Um, I thought it was cool because if you're a film, if you like films, um, this is where the movie The Birds, the Alfred Hitchcock movie The Birds, was filmed in Bodega Bay, that whole region. So it was kind of neat 
if you, if you see, one of the things I love to do is go around and taking pictures where movies were filmed. It's, it's one of the things I love to do. Every vacation, I got to find if there's movies filmed around there or TV shows filmed there. Even if I don't like the TV show, I've never seen it, I got to visit it, you know. But anyway, so we've got some pictures, and so we'll put, some, we'll put the first picture up there. So this is on the coast on Bodega Bay. This is where we went one day. Um, and I remember going, and I, I, we, we show up, and as soon as there's a kind of off, off to the side and down the hill is where we came from. And this is kind of an, a park. And we came up and we drove up into this parking lot, you know, and this is a kind of a, a state park there. And so we parked, and then there's trails you can walk all the way through. And, and, but as soon as we came up over the hill and I saw the ocean, it was like, oh, that view absolutely took my breath away. And I couldn't wait to get out of the car and just get out there. And just take it all in and take pictures and take videos. And so let's go to the next one. So here's another view. The first thing the kids and I wanted to do is go down, rip off our shoes and socks, pull up, pull up our jeans, because this was probably about you know 70, 69, 65, 70 degrees right there. So we, we were all wearing jeans. So we pulled up our jeans and we started wading in the in the waves and stuff, and and it was absolutely gorgeous. Next one. And so here's another view up on the hike, walking around. Stunning, stunning stuff. Next one. So here's a video of what, uh, what we saw. There's a trail. And all of a sudden, that's my sister. And all of a sudden, there's this green. There's Charlie off in the distance there. Yeah, so this is, so there's bluffs and cliffs and then a beach and then rocks and then beautiful green <laughs> and when I looked up there was like mule deer like I counted 10 of them just kind of walking around and they weren't afraid of us they were just kind of like hey <laughs> you know <laughs> kept eating and going on next one here's a wider shot here's Olivia and Charlie my oldest and my youngest there and there's like completely different, in, in one panoramic shot, there's so many different things to, to look at. When I say wonder, this incited wonder in me. Next one. So this is the first thing we did is we're down there in the ocean. We're in the waves. You can go to the next one. So we're just standing there waiting for the tide to roll up a little bit further and a little bit further. Next one. So here we are finally. Charlie was afraid I got stung by a stingray a few years ago, so Charlie's always apprehensive about going in the water because of that, but I kept telling him there's probably none up here. <laughs> so I'm getting ready to, to pick him up and put him in the waves. And um, I don't think there's sound on this, but if there was sound, when I picked him up above the waves, he's like, wah, you know, and go to the next one. So finally he got up the courage to just kind of go in it himself, but then he'd get all excited. And so we're not doing anything. We're just literally standing and letting waves hit our feet. <laughs> and listening to the waves and the seagulls. You know, next one. So now, right around this time, my phone died. <laughs> And it, like I said, one of the ways that like filming and doing things and taking photography and filming videos is like a spiritual discipline for me. It's, it's one thing that I, I, I feel like I connect with the divine through. It sounds strange if, if that's not something that you connect with, but I promise you it is for me. And so um, for, my, for my phone to die out there, meaning I couldn't take any photos and I couldn't capture things the way I wanted to capture them, was tough for me. But I think it may have been a God thing. Because my phone had been charged, and then it just went dead. And then later on, it randomly turned on again as if it wasn't dead at all. <laughs> Very strange. But my phone died, and it forced me to just do this. Now, Beth took that picture, and I'm literally just standing there. And there's, in order to get to where I was, it's hard to see, but there's about a 60-foot drop about three feet in front of me there. You can't really tell by the because the, the exposure, but 
But then there's paths that I could have that I could that I could go down, and you can walk all the way out to the end, which was only make maybe five or ten feet above the water, um, out on the end there. And there's, but I'm standing out there, and I'm just watching, and I'm looking, and I can't do anything. I just have to sit there, stand there, and take it in. But the funny thing was is. When, my, when I first realized that I couldn't use my phone, it was frustrating. So I put it in my back pocket and I looked up. But it then, all, all of a sudden, instantly, it was like that sense of wonder gripped me. And the, the, the scene and the, the scenery and everything just kind of took my breath away. And I stood there, probably for about five minutes without moving. And then I just started to climb and hike. And everyone else is off in the green part going up higher, up on, the, up on the hills and the bluffs and the green parts. But I didn't want to move. I wanted to stay where I was. And I can't explain it, but there's something spiritual that happened. When I just, I stopped. And I let wonder overtake me. You know the next one. I think this is the last one. And Beth got this video, and I tried to mess with it to get the exposure to see the color a little bit better. But again, you can't tell, but there's about a 60-foot drop in about three feet in front of me there. Um, but I was literally doing this for five minutes. And then I'd move to a different spot and move it again. And it reminded me of, of when I was first, uh, when I was first um, transitioning into ministry, and I was with the traveling group, and there was this one time when we were in Montana, and I remember just going off the beaten path by the, a river bend and sitting at this on this rock that looked like it was good to sit on. And so I sit on that, sat on this rock, and there was a, the river bend uh, bent around uh, the the base of this mountain with beautiful full full trees, and there's this, this gorgeous mountain in front of me. And and I remember this was like in late August, you know, 20 years ago. I remember sitting on the rock and just taking it all in. And there's something that, like, just one hour of that felt like it recharged me for however long, however much longer. And it's little things like that that I find that causes rest in us. We don't have to. We don't have to. S- s- stop and lay down and stay still or anything, because sometimes we think that's what rest means. Sometimes rest just means doing something that makes you experience wonder. Sometimes it's just doing something different that somehow, it might be exerting more energy, but somehow lights your fire and it fills your, your proverbial tank. Rest is an interesting thing, but wonder, if we can experience wonder, we can experience rest on a whole different level. And you might say, well, well it's easy for you. You were there, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was, it's, you know, but there's ways that we can do that right where we are. It's just harder. It's harder in our everyday life because our, a lot of times our houses are, the places that we are are a place of stress because we see the thousand things we have to do. Our workplaces, our offices, we see the thousand things we have to get done. Wherever we are, it seems like we've got something to do, somewhere to go. Our to-do list is always full. And it's easier when you're on vacation because you're in a hotel room. There's nothing to clean. And if there is, you call someone and they do it for you. <laughs> it's part of the price. There's nothing. You've got to find stuff to do when you're on vacation. So it's easier than but when you're at home, it's tough because there's so much. So much that's being demanded of you. And wherever we go, it's just another reminder. But think about the things that light your fire. Think about the things that cause you wonder. What could you do? How could you lean into that to experience rest in your everyday life? Listen, if you have a lot to do and you make yourself stop and take a break, you're going to feel irresponsible. But I'm telling you, in God's eyes, it's the most responsible thing you could do. I'm not saying do this every day, all day. That would be irresponsible. <laughs> I'm saying you have to find time, whether it's daily, whether it's over a few days, whether it's maybe once a week, 
If you're very busy and you have like really little kids, this is really tough. <laughs> Maybe it's once a month. But you gotta, we have to take time to experience wonder. We have to take time to stop. We have to take time to change it up a little bit. Because when we do that, we'll experience the divine, that inner sanctuary in, in, in ways, I don't want to say they're more powerful, but that are more meaningful. And so I just encourage you, what is it in your life that Maybe not now, but maybe think back. Like, what's, what's something that caused you to wonder? What's something that takes your breath away? What's something that causes you to stop and kind of go, and find a way to experience that. Find a way to do more of it. Because I really think that that's, that's something that all of us need to, to learn how to do in greater measures in this part of the world that we live in, in this time that we live in it. So rest in wonder, rest in wonder. Let's pray. God, thank you for reminding us that we're not human doings. We're not worker ants or worker bees, God. We're human beings. We're meant for relationships. We're meant for creativity and creating and, and relating and connecting with one another and doing things for each other. We're not created to do work for work's sake. God, help us, help us to live into a, a more meaningful life and help us to be happy for others when they find it instead of being jealous and vindictive and accusing others of not working hard enough or whatever. Help us to, to all together rejoice by learning to stop and to wonder, and to rest. Because God, I know the funny thing about that is, is we'll probably end up getting more done, even though we're spending less time on it. Help us to live into a new rhythm of rest and wonder. Not just for your glory, but for our own health. So we love you. We thank you. In your name. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm.
hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Belgrade Online. If it was life-giving and encouraging to you, please let us know by visiting our giving page at baumc.org give. Thanks again for watching and have a blessed week.